Well, good morning, Sherwood family, friends, extended family, coast coming from coast to coast. Uh, but we are coming to you live from Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. It is a beautiful day. Uh, welcome to Sherwood Online, the online ministry of the Sherwood Church of the Nazarene. Gentlemen, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. Good, good. So am I. So am I. Just finished my Tim Hortons coffee. So all is well. I've Richard McKay, who is watching right now, has been bringing me coffee from McDonald's. And let me tell you, they're not a sponsor, but I'm I'm loving it, and uh, and I'll just I'll leave it at that. Uh, before we get into the episode, I do want to make mention today. Uh, welcome to those that are watching from all of the the home groups scattered abroad, but also to the the group that's gathered in the sanctuary right now. I was just out there a minute ago, and guys, it was scary. There's people now. Uh, there, I didn't know what to do. It was kind of a little weird. But good morning to all that are watching, and uh, for those that are in the sanctuary right now, if you would like to connect your mobile device to our network so that you can participate in the chat, just look up our Wi-Fi network, Sherwood Guest, and the password for that is Sherwood Guest, all one word, capital S, capital G, and then you can still participate with us through the chat. Also, for those that are watching, uh, make sure that you like our Facebook page so that you can get notified when we go live with our Sunday morning service or any other uh, content that we put out. Also, you can find us on YouTube and you'll find a, a repeated version of this podcast taking place at 1 p.m. on our YouTube channel. Just search up the Sherwood Church of the Nazarene. You can click subscribe and the notification bell again so that you get notified. And if you just enjoy listening to audio, we are out on all the podcast players. So wherever podcasts are podcasted, you can listen to it there. So just, yeah, I know. I had to think about that sentence before I said it. Uh, mm -hmm. you, can, you can search for us there and you will find us. For those that are watching on Facebook right now, do us a big favor and click the share button and, and share this post to your Facebook wall. It doesn't force anybody to watch it. It just makes it available for all of your friends in your friend list. They will see it and maybe they'll click in and watch. Who knows what could happen? Uh, and so also and lastly, uh, make sure that uh, if you have any prayer requests, if there's something that you're aware of or, or you just need prayer for, uh, you can either do it. You can let us know a few ways. If you're comfortable, put it in the chat here on Facebook, or you can reach out to us on our website and contact us. And the website is www.nazpei, that's N-A-Z-P-E-I.com. And from there, you can let us know. And we would love and, and would be more than happy to pray for you and gather the community to pray along with you. So gentlemen, before we get into the, um, the introductions, and uh, we, have, we have an esteemed gentleman with us this morning, Dr. Mike Sider, but we're going to get into more about him in a moment. Uh, I have an icebreaker for you guys, and uh, I'll put the graphic up on the screen so that people can follow along, and we're going to do a little icebreaker. And the question is this. What crazy activities do you dream of trying someday? What crazy activities do you dream of trying someday? All right, gentlemen. I think Mike should go first on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, get the, get our special guest first, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, for anybody that knows me well, there are no crazy activities that I dream of trying because <laughs> I don't do crazy things. I play it safe. I analyze the, uh, the risks and uh, follow the rules and make sure things are safe and yeah, so. Oh, okay. Let me augment this for you then, Dr. Mike. What <laughs> okay. what boring activity do you dream of trying someday? Okay. All right. Something something safe and boring. Um, well, actually, I did dream of uh, getting my pilot license, and that can be can be safe. It can be risky. Mm -hmm. uh, could be could be could be considered crazy by some. I uh, I took the ground school. Uh, I took all the the in class training. I went up for my first flight, and we emergency landed after 30 seconds, and I haven't <laughs> been up since. <laughs> oh, so I, go. oh, I just had an anxiety attack. Oh. <laughs> Pastor, what about you? Let's, let's bring it back to... Oh, okay. Well, uh, actually, my story is a little similar to Mike's. Uh, I did take some training to fly. Uh, I was about 16 years old at the time, and I actually did a solo flight. 
Wow. Uh, you get way so, ahead of yeah. Me. Yeah. I, I, I'm one step ahead of you on that. Well, I'll tell you what, here's the crazy thing I'd love to do. And Gord Christie, if you're listening, you can help me. I would love to have a, the Corvette for a day <laughs> and open road on the way to say Fredericton, you know, four lanes and open that puppy up and let her go. So uh, that would be, that would be crazy. And I'd Good love word. to uh, <laughs> put the pedal to the metal and see if we can cross the 200 mile an hour barrier. To any, R to any RCMP officers that are watching, this does not count as evidence in a court of law. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think for me, uh, we were at Victoria Park the other day with the kids and someone was parasailing up over over the park. And I, I don't enjoy flying generally because I, I would say that it's, it's something to do with uncontrolled heights where I'm not in control. So it's a control issue. I get that. We can unpack that later. But I think that if I was in charge of the up and down and how far up I was going, I would really enjoy that. Now, Mandy thought it was ridiculous that the person was flying over water. And I said, well, if you crashed, what would you rather hit? Would you rather like have the potential of living by hitting the water? Or would anyway, I still didn't win that. Uh, so let's see what we got going on. Um, uh, Marcus is Marcus has said a lot here. Um, I've already <laughs> driving a tank, fighting in a gang. My daughter is saying uh, skydiving. Let's see here. What else do we got? Mm -hmm. Oh, Bonnie McDonald, barrel racing. Now, is that when you're inside a barrel and you're just rolling? <laughs> okay. That's the one that goes over Niagara Falls. Okay. Uh, yeah. Lisa Yunker is jetpack flying over water. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deb Christie, water rafting. Mary Ellen Knockwood wants to go parasailing. M Mary Ellen, let's set it up. We'll go together. Uh, oh, your wife, Mike, would like to go skydiving. So see if you could set that up. She can do that alone, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you get back in the plane and get her up there, and then she can jump out. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pastor, your daughter wants to go skydiving. Pastor Annette wants to go skydiving. Uh, and that's okay. kind of what I'm seeing thus far. So before we uh, before we turn things back over to Pastor, what we're going to do is uh, is have our personal declaration. And uh, Mike, I've got a note here for you. If you could maybe speak up or get closer to your microphone just a little bit. Some people are finding it hard to hear you. We all love you. Yeah, but... yeah I'll talk louder. Thank you. Uh, all right. So our personal declaration is this. Uh, today, I choose to abide in Christ. I will remain connected to him by engaging in his word, listening to his voice, obeying his commands, and loving one another. My desire is to bear much fruit for his glory. Pastor Dave, take it away. All right. Uh, thank you, Pastor Bradley and Dr. Mike, for uh, uh, helping us here this morning. Uh, just before I uh, do our call to worship today, I want to take uh, personal privilege and say a very, very special happy birthday to my grandson, Zachary. Ooh. He is seven years old today. So the whole day belongs to him. Awesome. And happy birthday, Zachary. Fine young, fine young boy. He loves life and he uh, he's pretty precious. And so I just want to say happy birthday to him. Happy birthday, dude. Yes, indeed. And I hope he's watching this morning. Our call to worship is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, and uh, these verses are in the Hebrew uh, it's called Shema, or uh, that's how it's pronounced. It's a Jewish prayer that is uh, used morning and night, and the Shema says that God is personal and demands love from his people with every aspect of their being. It says that we should follow his instructions and allow his love to be seen in and through us. And in the Jewish faith, this is a very, very important prayer. And as Christians rooted in the Judeo-Christian tradition, it is the same importance for us today. Let us hear the word of the Lord this morning. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be in your hearts. Impress them on your children. 
talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And so may that be our prayer this morning and even this evening. We've uh, had so many guests uh, with us over this last, uh, I think, 20 weeks. Is that about where we are, Bradley? Episode 20, that's today. Wow, it's been six months since uh, we've had uh, what we would consider a regular church service. It's been different ever since. But we've met some very, very interesting people. Mm -hmm. And uh, now as we swing into the fall season, uh, we're going to engage uh, more and more of the folks that are a part here of the church family. And so uh, we have Dr. Mike Sider with us this morning. He is uh, a, a professional and experienced chiropractor. And so if you need to get straightened up, he's the man you want to see. Uh, if you need a little help, uh, he'll uh, he'll be glad to inflict pain on where it hurts in order to make it better. P Pastor, if I can just jump in for a second. Dr. Mike, did you know that if you were to Google search you, that there are a lot of reviews out there for you and your practice? Did... Um, I try not to look at those. Well, but... well, I, tr I, I found them. <laughs> and yeah, and we've got someone here five. St everything I've seen is five stars. And, and someone's saying that they've been going to, chiro to chiropractors for 40 years, and it wasn't until you uh, that, that there was actually a difference made in their life. So, wow. um, yeah, ev everything That's I'm seeing one. here, man, is, is uh, just excellence in, in your practice and in your people. Good stuff. Well, thank you, Lord, for that. Yes, indeed. So, Dr. Mike, good morning. Welcome. Mm -hmm. You uh, are looking rather relaxed and comfortable, and this is the first uh, dog we've had on our show as well. Yes. And would you like to uh, introduce him or? Oh, well, yeah, this is Clifford. Um, I was excited to hear your announcement that we're going to be allowed to have dogs in church from now on. Wait. And uh, so this is just, he's just part of the advertisement for that. Okay. Oh, that's All powerful. right. So, Dr. Mike, uh, it's that's not true, by the way. <laughs> Don't bring your dogs to church. All right. We'll bring church to you. How's that? You're right. Yeah. OK. It's been six months, of course, since all of this COVID-19 business has taken place. And how's that impacted you and your business and um, the adjustments you've had to make? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, it's hard to believe it's been six months. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah. just want to make sure I'm talking loud enough. Okay. Um, yeah, it really is hard to believe it's been six months. Uh, initially, I think, um, you know, just like anyone else that was self-employed, uh, it was kind of a scary, a scary time not knowing what was going to go on and uh, just how, uh, how things were going to work out. <clears throat> we ended up being closed for about six weeks. Uh, um, I was open for emergencies. I had a kind of a cell phone number set up so that uh, people could call if their back went completely out and they, they, you know, had to go to emergency room or come and see me. Um, figured it was safer for them, for them to come and see me than be in the emergency room. So, mm -hmm. so we were allowed to do that. Um, and then once we get back to work, uh, you know, praise, praise God, it, it picked up very quickly and things, uh, things got busy very quickly, but of course everything was different. We had to, uh, jump through a lot of hoops to be able to, to be open. And, um, you know, the number one thing was just sanitizing everything. I've, I've kind of joked to a lot of patients that I always dreamed of being a professional cleaner. And now my, my dream has come true because I'm constantly spraying down tables and sanitizing and, uh, cleaning door handles and keyboards, all those things Bill McPherson's been telling me to do for years. And, and uh, I just never, <laughs> never took to heart, but I've been avoiding, we haven't had any buffets at the office since uh, things, things, <laughs> things started, but um, 
Yeah, so just a, a lot more work, a lot more expense. Um, initially, I was wearing gloves and a mask with every patient. And then uh, I talked to somebody that worked in the, the health, the chief health officer's uh, office, and she said that they really didn't recommend gloves, that you should just be washing your hands really well. And so I was happy to get rid of the gloves, uh, happy to get rid of, well, just trying to find gloves was a challenge, you know, and, and uh, the cost of them just kept going up and up. Um, so that was a big thing. And then we had patients um, waiting in their cars and we would call them when it was time to come in. So we didn't have anybody waiting in the waiting room at all, trying to, you know, make sure there was no interaction between any patients whatsoever. Had all the, the common area doors, like the uh, hallways and um, stairwellways, all those kind of doors, we had them propped open so that uh, patients didn't have to touch the door handles. Uh, had signs up all over the place to wash your hands as soon as you got here and wash your hands when you're leaving and don't touch anything on your way out. Uh, that was basically it. Okay, well, uh, maybe your new nickname is Mr. Clean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you should shave your head. That'd be appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? You should shave your head and get a, get a yeah, thing like Mr. Clean. I should. Yeah, get yeah. a white suit. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> be on TV. Yeah, yes, indeed. I, could, I still remember that jingle. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Well, <laughs> uh, to, spirit, to spiritualize all of this, who shall uh, come into the Lord's presence and into the holy hill of the Lord? Those who have clean hands mm. and mm. a pure heart. Pure heart. Yeah. So uh, that probably well, is I a good half verse. Of it. Yeah. yeah. I got and half of it down with all my sanitizer. Yeah. Anyways, uh, th thanks for sharing a little bit of that this morning, Mike. And and I know that you are deeply respected within the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pastor Bradley, as you shared some of those uh, comments earlier, they are indeed true. And uh, as people come and, and receive treatment, as it were, uh, they are also loved and prayed over. Uh, they don't know that. It's not on the sign or on the paper. But the mm -hmm. presence of the Lord is with you. And in working through you becomes a blessing to so many. So again, thanks for joining us this morning. We've got some more things to do later, but uh, okay. enjoy your, your new home there. Now in Charlottetown, you're back in civilization and you That's have right. actual Good uh, reliable high-speed internet. <laughs> yes, so, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. That's All right, let's worship move. together. I believe this morning uh, we have... Uh, Pastor Ryan and Pastor Bradley, is it? Leading oh, us? there's a there's a team, a team, the whole Pastor. team this morning. Team. All right, let's let's do it.
It is so good when we get to bring the worship team in and it's not just about recording music. It's such a great time together um, in community and to worship the Lord. And, and we have a blast playing music together too. Uh, keep trying to get, get Dr. Mike to come, but it's almost like he's been moving uh, his, his whole home and family in the middle of all that. Anyway, we'll get him. We'll get him. Uh, guys, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get into our announcements. And so let's do it. Here we go. I should get some background yes. music for this time. <clears throat> Live on Facebook at Sherwood Online. No, uh, don't forget every every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. live on Facebook, 1 p.m. repeated version of this taking place on YouTube. Don't forget to like our Facebook page, to subscribe to the YouTube uh, channel, and to click share wherever you can so that uh, the message of Jesus Christ goes out further and reaches beyond what we could just reach here. If you want to stay connected with, with what's going on during the week, Mondays and Thursdays from 9.30 a, at 9.30 a.m., there's a prayer and encouragement ministry with Deb Christie. It's still taking place through Zoom, and the Zoom meeting ID is 902-368-8484. Sunday, 9.30 a.m., we are in what's called Sherwood Renewal Phase 1. If you would like to sign up, for our sanctuary gathering, uh, sign up is mandatory, and we ask that you do that through our website at www.naspei.com. You can sign up right now for next Sunday, uh, for September 20th. And if, if you can't sign up online, then we ask that you call the church and let us know that you would like to come and how many. And the phone number is 902-368-8484. But sign up uh, there is live now for next Sunday. And we will make mention of it again, I'm sure, but you need to sign up each week. It's not a sign up and then you're just good. You need to sign up each week for each Sunday that you believe that you'll be coming. Uh, and so again, September 20th, doors open at 9.30 a.m., service beginning at 10 a.m. And you can go to the website or call the church for more information there. I want to thank you again for just your faithfulness in giving of tithes and offering. And there's a few ways that you can do that uh, through e-transfer. And the email is office at naspei.com. You can give online through our website, just heading over to naspei.com. And from there, clicking the Give Online tab. And if you would like to use debit, credit, or cash, uh, we just ask that you would call the church. And we will uh, uh, make, make arrangements so that we can facilitate that with you. And if you're in the sanctuary gathering, I do believe that there are a few options for you there. And uh, Pastor Nadine will let you know that as well. If you've been enjoying the SMORP and would like to make it a part of your daily routine, you can download the document from our website, naspei.com, and you can use it in your daily devotional time. And finally, 
ask that you continue to pray with us for those that are called upon to make difficult decisions during these days in government, in health care, and all over. Uh, this is a great time for the church to come together to pray, and so we'd ask that you would do that right along with us. Pastor, those have been your announcements. Okay, just one other reminder that on Sunday, October the 4th, uh, Kids Ablaze Ministry will open. We uh, have approval for the second uh, grouping of people to meet here in the same building. And so uh, we'll have more instructions as the next week or two passes. But uh, just a reminder, that's the second uh, major event on the calendar. Uh, again, a Great welcome to those who are gathered in the sanctuary today. Uh, we have a full house and uh, thank you for, for being here and signing up. And just a reminder again that you need to do that each and every week. 2020 has been an unusual year for all of us, but it was almost a year ago in prayer and in waiting on the Lord that I was directed to uh, give us some leadership in terms of our 2020 theme. And uh, that of course is abiding in Christ. And we started with that daily declaration. Today I choose to abide in Christ. And perhaps in light of all that's happened, that theme is probably more relevant today than ever before. In light of all that we've seen and experienced. And so I just want to uh, kind of uh, bring us up to date and context for where we are this morning and uh, where the next steps will take us in this fall season. Mm -hmm. There are five, five major focal areas under abiding in Christ. Uh, praying, that's where we started the year. Listening, and actually just finished it here a few weeks ago. And this morning, we're going to take a season here, a number of weeks, and focus on obeying. And if you are in the sanctuary today, you will see the obeying banner that is now up and posted. And just take a look around the auditorium, and you will see it there. Then the fourth uh, theme before the year is over will be connecting. And then the last part will be praising. Abiding in Christ is about remaining steadfast in him. The idea is that our heart is settled on re our relationship with the Lord. We're not wandering off, but we're staying focused and our eyes are fixed on Jesus. And so abiding is being at home with Christ in every part of our life. And unless we're abiding in Christ, we are subject to the wind that's blowing, the circumstances around us, and this is a time more than ever where we need to be rooted and grounded in the ways of God. And so that has been our theme, and we want to continue to uh, focus on that uh, here this morning. And so in light of that, we are going to start the next section today, the third theme under abiding in Christ, and that is obeying. Now, what I want us to understand here before we get to the scripture this morning is the fact that to hear the word of the Lord is to obey. And in the Hebrew, uh, the word Shema, we talked about that earlier this morning, actually means to hear God. And the meaning attached to that is we not only hear him, but we uh take heed to what he is saying and respond with obedience to that word. And so it's, it's the hearing and obeying are not two different things. And so in scripture and in our Christian life to hear the word of the Lord, and we have been listening and God has been speaking and the response on our part is absolutely critical in terms of uh, walking with the Lord and being a follower of Jesus. So, so to hear is to obey. And that is scriptural, that's biblical. And we're going to unpack that a little bit this morning from 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 13. And so uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, open them up here. 
The words will also be on the screen. I'm going to ask Dr. Mike to read the word of the Lord this morning, 1 Peter 2, 13 through to verse 25. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority, or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters. Not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you're suffering, if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for, for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like uh, sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. All right. This is the word of the Lord this morning. Thanks be to Thanks. God. Be to God for his word to us today. There's uh, language and uh, metaphors and references here that are certainly relevant to first century Christianity and may seem a little bit foreign to us mm -hmm. today. But once we get past that, there is a message that is enduring and uh, a heart of the Lord for us here in the 21st century. And of course, uh, every Sunday we have been using the format called SMORP, which is an acronym for Scripture, Message, Obedience, there it is, Repentance, and Prayer. And so uh, we're going to see today about abiding in Christ and how this flows and how it fits together. And so uh, wherever you are this morning, I invite you to participate. Uh, perhaps just make some notes in your journal. Uh, contribute online as well. We'd appreciate uh, your response and your thoughts. So the question is, of course, what are some words or phrases in this passage that stand out to you? Uh, this is uh, a rich passage in terms of, of uh, phrases and words. I'll, I'll just get started here today. Uh, I uh, underlined or circled a number of key uh, words and phrases. Of course, the first one was submit. And then uh, the other little phrase was the Lord's sake. And then in verse uh, 15, doing good. And particularly in verse 16, live as free people. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the context here. And then uh, verse 21 for me, follow in his steps. And then also, uh, or verse 20. Uh, one rather, and then verse 23, he that is Christ entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Now, there, there's probably half a dozen sermons here, mm -hmm. but those are some fr key phrases and words that uh, certainly grab my attention. Gentlemen, anything that stands out to you? Well, you've need, you, uh, Pastor, you have to stop going first. <laughs> you, uh... The two things that jumped out to me, um, verse 16, live as free people and, and then submit. I, I saw, I saw two things here, freedom and submission and how they go together. And, uh, we can look into that a little bit more, but those are the two, uh, that's the two observations for me or the big observation in this. Okay. Yeah. And. Yeah, I would say verse 13 was the one that really stood out the most to me. And that was, yeah, again, just submit. 
submit yourselves to every authority, whether to the emperor, which in this case would be our prime minister. Um, and that's regardless of how you feel about him and his stance on various things and uh, or how I feel about him and his various stance on things. And regardless of whether I voted for him or whether I would like to see him in office, um, he is ultimately the supreme authority in this country. Um, and we need to submit to his authority and the people that he's put in place. So right down to the uh, chief health officer of PEI. Um, well, he didn't put her in place necessarily, but there's the premier and then he puts the chief health officer in place. But all those authorities that are in place to, um, to protect us and uh, to help us to do the right things. Um, and sometimes in the practical sense of things it can be um well i'll leave that for the obedience part i guess <laughs> <laughs> all right so what is this tell me about the nature and the work of god because uh, god's our reference point um at, at the end of the day so uh pastor bradley i'll let you go first on this one. Oh no pastor you go you i'm fixing the link <laughs> i'm okay people let me All know right. that september 20th the the link uh wasn't working for them to sign up so i'm fixing it right now okay well i'll, I'll go first then uh this passage tells me a lot about god first of all that he is a just judge mm -hmm. he gets it right and um he is worthy of our worship. He is a God who can be trusted. He is trustworthy. And at the end of the day, all human authority is subject to God as well. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it talks here about the emperor. And in, in Bible times, uh, the emperor was considered God-like or a God. So uh, it was more than just a, an official position. Uh, he embodied that uh, sense of divinity, actually. So uh, that, that needs to be uh, shared here as well. But at the end of the day, um, certainly I see here that God has the final say in all the affairs of humanity. Anything else that may have stood out to you about God's work in nature? I think just that God is a God of, of order mm. uh, and he's, he's set all these things into place and given people the idea, okay, we need a leader and we need, we need people to, um, uh, we need rules. We need laws. We need people to enforce those laws. Uh, we need consequences for those who choose not to obey those laws. Yeah. All those things are, are part of God's nature. Um, you see that throughout scripture. I, I, uh, Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Pastor. No, no sorry. go ahead. Well, I think um, in terms of his nature is is that he he's an equipper in that he calls us to something, but he says, I'm also going to show you how to do it. And I'm, I'm going to I'm going to give you the example. And so he calls us to this. You know, Mike, you made a really good point about how we need to submit to authority. But some of us would go, well, I don't I don't get that. I don't, how, how do I do that? What does that look like? What does what that even especially when I don't agree with with practices or policies and and uh verse 21 um to this you were called because christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps so if we want to know how to submit to authority i mean my goodness christ paid the ultimate price in submission to the authority he had done nothing wrong and and yet he was crucified but but he gives us this example of of what does it mean to submit to authority and uh and how to do it and so you know god because i ask lord how how do i submit to authority when it when it doesn't line up with my own personal convictions you gotta walk a walk a day in jesus's steps i think you gotta wonder what did he see all around him and anyway so that's kind of i see god as someone that equips us to be able to and gives us the example to show us how to do it okay all right and uh any any thoughts uh, shared online at this point, uh, or we keep going? Just that my mic is a little loud. That's the only thought. Hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll keep moving forward here. Uh, is there a scripture I could begin to memorize? Now, there are lots of uh, lots of scriptures, but let me suggest verse twenty-one. 
for us uh, as we go forward into the remainder of this day and the week before us. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. And so would you begin to write that down, begin to memorize that, hide it in your heart, because that's what you will need for strength and for guidance, even in the days that are to come. So the second part of SMARP, of course, is the message. And uh, what, what is the Lord saying to me? What is the Lord saying to you in this particular passage? There may be a word of correction, a, a word of guidance, a word of wisdom, encouragement, or a promise. Uh, let's, uh, let's focus on that this morning, because now we want to be in that place where we are listening to God, hearing his voice, and then, of course, the next part's obedience. And, and they're not different things. They are one and the same as we want to focus on on today. And so as, um, as, I, as I was working through this text and, and listening to God, here's what came very clear to me. The real issue here is, is about freedom. Mm. And that real freedom is not the ability to do whatever I want to do to do what pleases me or what I feel like, real freedom comes when I submit myself in obedience to God and those in authority over me who are under God's authority. And so the language here is, is particularly interesting because to be free is to be a slave. Right. That's a contradiction of words in our culture and in our language. And so the issue here today is that I am only free to be a slave to God. And unless I'm walking in obedience to him, I'm not walking in freedom. And so the whole idea of freedom in our culture and in our day is actually very contrary to biblical scripture and principles. And so it's when I am submitting to God, to authority, and obeying God and obeying authority, then I am free. And I believe that is so critical. And so it comes also in the context of relationship and responsibility for the Lord's sake. Yep. Not for my sake, but it is for the Lord's sake that I do this. And so... As, I, as I'm listening to this text, it, it's absolutely incredible because it is about my freedom and my real freedom in Christ is to be his slave and to submit to him and those under his authority and those who uh, are a part of the world of order that you said so well. And so uh, that, that's a takeaway yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to start preaching here, <laughs> and I think I have a little bit, but uh, to me, that just rings a clear bell uh, for me this morning. Gentlemen. Well, I, and I'm right with you, Pastor, because that's what jumped out at me was this idea of that we're called to freedom, live as free people. Well, what does that mean? And today, what we're taught in our culture, and you've said it already, but I'm going to say it again, is that we are taught that freedom means I can do what I want. If it feels good, do it. And that I come first. The, my needs, my wants, that comes first and that's freedom. And you work your whole life to have everything that you want and to, to do whatever you think is good. And, and you accumulate all this stuff and that that's what freedom is. And yet God here says, do not use your freedom to cover up for evil. Live as God's slaves. What does that mean? Show proper respect to everyone. So freedom for me isn't to think about myself first, it's to think about others first, which means submitting my will to the needs of others, to my family, to, to, to my wife, to, you know, and then, and then to love the family of believers. Well, that doesn't just, that's not just a nice feeling. Oh, it feels good to, that's going there with people in the good, in the bad, that is walking with them through whatever and and 
and it goes back and forth, them walking with me. But again, that comes to humbly submitting ourselves to one another, being accountable to one another, growing with one another. But that doesn't put my needs first. And fear God. Well, we could spend a whole series on what does it mean to fear God and then and then love the emperor or on, sorry, honor the emperor. And that comes back to what, you know, Dr. Mike has said about submission to authority. And you've said so well as as well, submission to authority. But that doesn't just mean the prime minister. We can look down through, you know, pastor, you are the authority here. I mean, Jesus Christ is the head of the church, but you are, you know, you're the pastor. And it is my responsibility as a believer, not just as an employee, but as a believer in Christ to, to submit myself to your authority. And, and, and I do that not, and, and I mean this with the most love and respect, not for your sake, but like you said, for the Lord's sake. Yeah. And so freedom for me is about submission. Okay. All right. Dr. Mike, any thoughts that you have in terms of the message part for you today? I think it's verse, yeah, verse 16. Uh, I mean, I'm right on, right on board with what you guys are saying, but verse 16, live as free people. Do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil mm. and live as God's slaves. And uh, I think what you, well, you both alluded to um, just the fact that this culture is has become so feeling based. Oh yeah. And one of the there's certain there's certain phrases that really annoy me, and uh, and one is when I ask somebody what they think and they tell me what they feel, and you know I, I feel like we should do this. I feel like I didn't ask them what they felt. I asked them what they think, and uh, there is a difference. And so everything just seems to be so feeling based. And and like you guys said, if you know if it if it feels right, then that's what we should do. Don't worry about what scripture says. I think that there needs to be that uh, the scripture scripture needs to be our base, right? It's not not our feelings. And, and that's uh, gone into the church as well. And so many people, that's why we call it the Charlottetown Shuffle, because, oh, I feel like the Holy Spirit has left the church. Or I feel like, uh, you know, this isn't the direction we're supposed to be going pastor. And I feel this and I feel that. And well, you know, God's not against feelings and emotion. I don't want to sound like he is, but your feelings have nothing to do with whether you're supposed to honor authority and, and um, your responsibility to honor authority in the church and the mm -hmm. government. Uh, yeah. I probably said too much. No, nope. keep, keep going. As we've all said, and I'm seeing it in chat, preach preach <laughs> <laughs> well let, let me summarize this freedom without submission and obedience to authority is chaos uh yeah and freedom under submission and obedience to authority brings order and it is for the lord's sake and not for ours and the uh and that's a message we need to hear over and over and over again and that's why if we're going to be abiding in Christ, we not only need to be listening, but to obey as well, because essentially those are the same things. They're not different. And more than ever in this season, this is the word of the Lord. Mm. Certainly, thanks be to God. Yeah. The other part of this, uh, Smorp here says, do you have a question for God? Um it's okay to ask questions. Absolutely. And I'll just throw one out here this morning because at times I think about this and, and not that I've been overly confronted with it, but at what point uh, is it better to obey God than man? And I think that scripture has been uh, taken way out of context and used to justify my own feelings. And yet at the same time, uh, as time go unfolds, uh, that's a question that may indeed uh, come to the surface more and more, and certainly is, is conversation for another day, but one that, uh, that I know people ask, and I ask that as well. Uh, in the book of Acts, we see, uh, you know, they disobeyed the order not to preach the gospel, uh, and I think if it comes to that, we obey God uh, more than man. But until that, we are in a season with a lot of rules and regulations. We feel it. We see it um, yep. in every way. And to honor the Lord today 
for his sake, we uh, offer our hearts in submission to him and to those in authority over us. The next part, of course, is obedience. What's a step of obedience that I need to take today based on what God is saying uh, to me? And, and as I, you know, again, I'm looking at this. Uh, for me, it was, David, I need you, the Lord saying, David, I want you to follow in my footsteps and continue to do what is right, even if there's accusation or insult against me. So continue to do what is right, follow in the footsteps of Jesus, mm. who submitted himself to the Father, and, and by doing good and doing right, I silence the critics or those who may, for whatever reason, uh, scoff or insult or bring accusation. So that's where, where I'm at this morning. Uh, gentlemen, is there a step of obedience for you today? It, similar to yours, and it just it was in the scripture, Christ gave us the example. And so if he's given us the example and he's called us to follow him, I need to be a follower and, and not lean on, you know, don't lean on your own understanding, but in everything I do, acknowledge him, follow him, use him as the, as the standard and, and he'll make my path straight. So that's how I'm going to obey. That's a step for me is just to, to be a follower first. Okay. All right, Dr. Mike. Yeah, for me, it's, um, I think that, oh, I'm being told my internet connection is unstable. I hope you can still hear me. We can. Okay, good. Um, for me, it's that God hasn't called me to judge authorities. He's called me to pray for authorities. And uh, oh, wow. I don't do that enough, including, you know, from right from the prime minister down to, uh, well, even for you pastors, I, I definitely don't pray for you guys enough. So I need to do that more. Okay. The, the moment of transformation happens here at the point of repentance. Because repentance is about turning. Mm -hmm. And it's about renewal. It's about thinking differently. It's about thinking God's thoughts, not just thinking um, the popular conversation of the day or simply uh, some simple phrase that sounds really good, but is very shallow. Yeah. It is really about reorienting our lives and our attitudes and our thoughts to God's ways and away from the ways of the world. So I'm turning away from self. I'm turning to God in repentance. And that is the point of real transformation. And so as I'm looking at this passage, what is the confession uh, for me today? And uh, boy, you know, the Lord, when you ask him that, he, he, uh, he doesn't mince words on this. He'll come right to you and tell you where it is. And for me, um, I need to confess uh, that I often seek self-justification and I want to retaliate and get even and get my point across and defend myself against whatever may be coming at me. And I tell you that that's, you know, that's, that's the human response. And, and it's not that in and of itself, that's all wrong or bad, but it, it, it can deflect away from really receiving God's heart and God's correction and God's discipline. Uh, and so I, I need to confess that this morning. And, and even, even when it comes to submission, I, you know, I might do that on the outside, but in the inside, uh, you know, I'm, I'm rebelling. You know, it's kind of like when you tell Johnny to sit down and uh, he, you know, he said, oh, I'm standing up in, inside. And so that, <laughs> mm. that part of, human nature and that response is very real. And so I, I just, I'm putting that out and say, Lord, uh, I confess that and uh, help me to follow in your steps there and not to respond, but to trust the one who judges justly. Gentlemen, where is the Lord? 
pointing his finger at your heart today. Right, right with what you said. I'm not trying to cop out here, but you said it very well for me. And it drew, you know, verse 23, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. He made no threats, but he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Mm. And, and I need to live that out. And I need that to be not just my actions, because my actions may not actually reflect what's in my heart. I, I want my thought life changed, transformed, so that I instead of, instead of going to that place where if I get hurt or someone says something that in my head I go, yeah, you know, you come up with something, that, that my response is to, to pray and not in a, well, Lord, just fix this poor sinner that doesn't oh. know better, but, but to actually really in love begin to pray anyway. Okay. And I would confess I've not done that <clears throat> at times. Yeah, so mine, mine just carries right through from the obedience. Um, you know, I haven't been in that position where I've been in authority and had uh, people criticizing my authority, but I've been in the position where I have criticized authority. And uh, yeah, I just need to repent of that and, and repent of prayerlessness too that I alluded to before. Um, and just be more prayerful. So I confess that. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Are there any comments online that would be helpful to share before we go to the last point? When we suffer for doing good, our act of obedience is to endure patiently. That's coming from Pastor Rianne. Uh, Melody Sider says, I have a wise husband. I didn't want to miss that one. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. <laughs> Uh, James Vardy, this was a little bit earlier in our conversation about feelings, and he said, facts don't care about your feelings. I thought that was pretty poignant. Well said, James. Um, let's see here. Keith Belbin, uh, earlier when we were talking about freedom, he said we, are, we have freedom from sin versus freedom to sin. Beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so we'll leave it there. There's a few more comments I'd recommend people sure. scroll through. And All so. right, good. The last part of SMORP, of course, is prayer. And uh, as always, so many things to pray for. Uh, certainly pray for those in authority over us. Mm -hmm. that, that's come through very, very clear. Uh, that's step one in terms of what it means to walk in obedience and in submission. And so uh, let's really just continue to pray this week for those in authority over us. And whether that's in the context of family or our faith community or our province or a nation, uh, let's, let's make that commitment this week as the body of Christ to be a people of prayer for those who are leading us in one way or another. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also this morning, prayer, of course, is thankfulness. Mm -hmm. And as always, uh, I love how this pulls it all together. And I'm thankful this morning that God is trustworthy and that I can live in his freedom by submitting and obeying to him. He is worthy of my life. He is worthy of my worship. He is worthy of my trust. And that I can live on today and the week that is before us. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, anything else to be thankful for this morning? Well, I will just say, and Pastor, we, we talk about this a lot. I say, I'm so thankful uh, that I'm here. And the Lord, I just, it's going to, it's not, it's not enough. It's just, it's not enough. And Mandy will know, um, the Lord has been so good to us. He's been so good. And has everything been easy? Nope. Have there been questions and times when you wonder stuff? Yep, of course. But his goodness and his faithfulness have been so evident in our life that all I can say is he has been some good to me and to my family. And, uh, and I'm just so thankful for, for his presence in our life. And uh, that, that would be mine. Awesome. Dr. Mike? Oh, I mean, the list is so long. Um, <laughs> it really is. I'm so incredibly blessed. Um, you know, I'm, I'm extremely thankful that God gave me an amazing, 
um, you know, God fearing wife and, uh, that my, uh, kids are serving the Lord and, uh, that we live in beautiful Charlottetown and that God sustained us through, you know, the whole COVID shutdown. And mm. I honestly, in the end, didn't see any negative effect on our bank account. And to me, that was just a miracle of, of just God's provision. And, oh, the list just goes on and on. And I'm thankful for you two pastors and for our church and uh, thankful for health. I could go on for a long time, but I just, you could. Yeah. <laughs> thankful for fast internet too. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> we'll talk about maybe, it after. <laughs> maybe you want to turn the speed up a little bit on that, but that's all yeah. right. That's all right. Yeah. Maybe we got a problem there. I am quite a ways from my, mo from my router right now. So we'll blame it on that. I think okay. so. There we go. How great is our God. Let's worship together.
Well, thank you for uh, spending time with us this morning. Thank you, Dr. Mike, for being on uh, the podcast today. I've been handing out a lot of lobster dinners. Careful, um, yes, careful. Careful. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking uh, maybe breakfast at Maid Marion's. Sure. That'd be oh, okay. It's not lobster season now anyway. That's right. That's when right. When you want to do that, we should set the date right now so we make sure it happens. <laughs> You send me a message and we'll make it happen. Uh, all right. I'll all right. right. <laughs> and uh, for those who are today in close relationship with Christ, I want to encourage you to keep walking forward in faith and obedience. That's our theme during these days. If you're searching for spiritual truth and understanding, keep seeking, keep searching for Christ is closer than you know. If today you're filled with fear and anxiety, I offer the peace of Christ to you. His promise is that he will never leave you and he'll never forsake you. And no doubt some have become distant in your walk with the Lord. I want to invite you to come home. In fact, he's inviting you to come home. He's waiting for you with open arms. And Maybe you're watching this morning and you do not know Christ. As your Lord and Savior, I want you to know he knows your name. And there's no better time than right now to open your heart to him and invite him to be your Lord and Savior. Call to him and he will answer and he will transform your heart even this morning. Again, just a reminder that all of our contact information is uh, posted online. Feel free to reach out and connect with us. Uh, those conversations are happening more and more. Love to pray for you and with you. And I pray this morning that God would bless you richly and those that you love. Pastor Bradley, how shall we exit? Gracefully, as always, of course, Pastor. Yes, indeed. You asked me at about 5-2, five, 5 minutes going live, hey, can we get a live feed from the sanctuary so people can see what it's like? And uh, the answer is still no. However, um, <laughs> we were able to get a picture or two from the sanctuary now. It's from behind. It's everyone's back is to the camera, which is fine. But would you like me to toss it on the screen so people can kind of see what we're doing? That'd be great. All right. Now you guys won't see it, unfortunately. But those that are watching from home, you'll get to see. Let me see if I got this right. Uh, so this is our sanctuary, and uh, we've got we've got tables and people around them, and they're watching us right now. They're watching this happening as it's happening, and so glad to have people back in in the building, and looking forward to being out with you guys in just a few minutes. Uh, so that's what's happening in our sanctuary. So let's get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, folks. Uh, don't forget that every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. right here on Facebook will be live and you can participate along with us. We love it when you're chatting in in uh, in the chat on Facebook. There'll be a repeated version of this at 1 p.m. on YouTube. So make sure that you uh, if you'd like to watch on YouTube, that you subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified when we go uh, live with any content there. Don't forget to click share. It's not too late. You can always click share on this post so that uh, we just get more exposure. The gospel goes further out and we would love it if you could do that. Uh, again, thank you, Pastor and Dr. Mike, for being here with us. It has been a fantastic time. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I need to say. I just need to get my last little slide going because we just love this. Uh, all right, folks, until next time. Stay holy, stay humble, stay hungry, and stay healthy. <laughs>